For reasons that utterly escape everyone involved, you're listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. Here are your hosts, Gabe Howard and Michelle Hammer. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody, and welcome to this special, loving, caring Valentine's Day edition of A Bipolar, A Schizophrenic, and A Podcast. My name is Gabe Howard, and I have bipolar disorder. Hi, I'm Michelle Hammer. I'm schizophrenic. And today, Michelle and I are finally going to admit to the world that we are in love. We are in and love that we with each are other. a couple. Yes. And uh, we share a Valentine's bond. Like, how do you picture our wedding going, Michelle? Um, Really, really, really well. I think it's going to go poorly. I mean, first off, we have the whole Jewish, not Jewish thing. We have the schizophrenia, bipolar thing. We have the fact that we're not actually dating. I mean, I think that's going to really hurt some things. I know. And you're married and everything. Oh, I forgot about being married. Am I married. a sister wife? You know, I, I haven't really considered that possibility, but I do think that this is a great segue into letting people know that we are bringing back for the first time in 2019 and the first time in a few months... Two truths and a lie. Two truths and a lie. Two truths and a lie. So for those of you who are a little dense, Michelle and I are still frenemies. We are not in love. There's going to be no nuptials. Don't get angry that you're not invited to the wedding because my spouse and your girlfriend would be furious. 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 For those of you who are new listeners, we used to play Two Truths and a Lie all the time, and then we just kind of stopped for a while because we just kind of ran out of stuff to talk about. But we got some emails from folks that wanted us to bring it back. And we thought, well, let's bring it back for a special Valentine's Day edition and use relationships as our marker. So Michelle and I will each tell three stories. Two of them will be true. One of them will be a lie. And they are going to be about dating, relationships, coupling, and there'll be some sort of mental illness tie-in. So I'm not going to tell you the story about the woman that I asked out and she said no because, you know. She that just happened said, a lot, didn't yeah, it, well, Gabe? That one, happened a lot. Yeah, 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 you could tell that story about 500 times, right. can't you? That is very fair. But there is no mental illness tie-in. So that is the goal. Okay, Michelle. Yes. I am going to use this term very loosely. Yes. Ladies first. <laughs> yeah. Ladies first. Okay. My first story. When I first moved to Astoria, I was on that kick of I'm going to find myself a nice New York Jewish boy. And I met a nice Jewish boy named Johnny who worked as a nurse, you see. So he knows medical type stuff. Well... We came out that, you know, I take some medication for anxiety and stuff, and he saw me take a pill at night. Well, this was before I was actually diagnosed as schizophrenic officially, and I was taking a pill at night to relax myself, and he would say, like, don't take that pill. You don't need that pill. Don't take it. He was from Alabama, and this is New York, so he had, like, just not New York type things. I don't know what I'm trying to say there, but he was from Alabama. Whatever. Are you insulting Alabama? I, I'm insulting Alabama. It, it really Al sounds like you're trying like really hard not to insult Alabama. No, but when you come from Alabama and then you come to New York, you know, there's a different way of acting. Yeah, there's like a culture shift there. It's a like culture one, shift. One is, one, is the, one is the South and one is New York yeah, City. Yeah, but like there, when I just say, maybe it was just an, an Alabama thing or the thing or you're a nurse, but like you don't tell a girl, don't take that pill before you go to sleep when the girl's doctor said, here's your pill before you go to sleep. You know, you want to take that pill, otherwise you wake up nuts. Did you one, say so you don't wake up nuts? Kind of. And well, <laughs> I didn't say that. And then one time he said to me that he could never date a girl that who had ever tried to kill herself. And I was like, no, he, and he didn't know. He didn't he know, didn't that know at never, this point. He'd ever been suicidal. No, no. So he, you're starting to get a lot of red flags. I'm here. getting a lot of red flags here. But he still doesn't know. You never told him. You just let these go unchecked. Like he said it, you put it in your memory bank, and then you move forward. Yeah, but I was still between diagnosis. I didn't have schizophrenia diagnosis yet, although I knew something was up, and I was seeing a psychiatrist and taking medication for something, but nothing specific. But you had been suicidal. Right, but I didn't tell him, because what was I going to say? Like, oh, yeah. I guess we're breaking up, because of oops. Because of oops. Because okay. of oops. All right. That's... And um, my whole story here is that we did break up, and I'm so glad we did because obviously that was not going to work out. 
oh, I'll tell you how we broke up. So he's trying to break up with me. And I was like, I was a little upset about it. I kind of wanted to stay with him. And then he says, I heard that clingy girls, it means they were molested as a child. Were you molested as a child? And I go, excuse me? Okay, I think it's time that you just leave now. So he had a lot of misconceptions about trauma, about mental illness, about mental health in general. And he was a nurse. Wow. And look, I know this might not be the intent of your story, but if this story is true, this nurse is out there practicing with other people. I have no idea if this story is true or not, but I hope to God this one is the lie. He was a nurse. He was a nurse. He was a nurse. He was from Alabama. He's from Alabama. He was a nurse. He told me... Don't take my pills. I don't need them. And he could never date a girl that ever tried to kill herself. And all clingy girls must have been molested in the past. So he was a jackass. Um, I wouldn't say jackass. More like dumbass. Dumbass. Okay. Dumbass. All right. So we're going to call that story Alabama Stigma. Yes. Alabama so, Stigma. So Michelle's first story is Alabama Stigma. Mm-hmm. We are going to start my first story. Oh. Let's hear it, Gabe. When I was in high school... All the way back in high school, I was I, no, I wasn't diagnosed with anything. I didn't understand mental illness at all. I, I believed, as I've said a million times on this show, the pop culture definition of mental illness. So I thought I was an asshole because I knew that I wasn't doing what my parents asked me to do, but I, I didn't think that there was any sort of like illness or disorder or anything that would involve medical intervention. So eventually I started dying and a lot of people don't know that I met my first wife in high school. But long before we were dating, I asked other women out. And as, as you did joke, I, I, I was fat in high school. I had really bad acne. I, I just, I, I was not popular with the ladies. And as much as I would like to blame that on bipolar disorder. Yeah. I don't think that was it. Yeah. Well, yeah, it wasn't. Was it, it wasn't. was it like the 550 pounds? I, I, I think uh, being a pimply faced fat ass with no personality and untreated mental illness is probably just not what high school girls are looking for. I would have to agree with that, Gabe. Yeah, but I didn't understand this. I thought that the reason that people didn't date me is because, you know, I didn't, you're in high school. So I didn't understand that whole, uh, you know, high school isn't how the real world works. I was at a small high school too. There's only 36 people in my graduating class. Are you kidding? There was 800 in mine. Exactly. Exactly. So I was, I was in a small town. Just, I, I really, I firmly 100% believed that the reason that nobody wanted to date me is because I was a garbage person. I was worthless. I was bad. And I thought about suicide every day for as far back as I can remember. And that was true in high school as well. And when I tried to date, when I put myself out there, when I asked you know girls out and they said no, this all led into this belief that nobody would love me. So I don't have like a story about like one specific you know, girl or person. I really just have this idea that I asked so many people out. I tried to go on dates. I I just, I put myself out there and I was constantly rejected. It all fed into that paranoia and that delusion that I am unlovable, worthless, and deserving of death. I I didn't know. I, I just didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Some people just don't date well in high school. Uh, there, there are plenty of people that do perfectly fine when they hit their 20s or they hit college that just they don't do well in a small town in Pennsylvania with 36 people who like to hunt deer. Yeah, uh, I, I don't I didn't date very well in high school either. Yeah. I have so to say. I, I dating just, in high school, I'm not easy. But I really, really genuinely, honestly felt that it wasn't just because, you know, hey, I hadn't come into my own. I, I hadn't grown up. I hadn't developed a personality. I honestly thought that all of these people were evaluating me reasonably, determining that I was defective, worthless, and garbage, rejecting me. This fed into my abandonment issues. And voila. I thought that I was garbage, and and this was one of the many pieces that I put together to decide that death would be a reasonable choice in the future. Gotcha. So my story number one is going to be called High School Dating Suicide. I think a lot of people can relate to that story, I'm thinking. I think so, too. Yeah. But I think that... If people are well adjusted, <laughs> and and I, I don't know what that's like, but I think if people are well adjusted, they just kind of grow out of it or they learn or they meet that special person. I always have a saying that says everybody is unlucky in love until they aren't. 
because when you're single, you're trying and you're, you're not meeting the right person. And you know what, what's that phrase? You have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince. Yeah. 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 Nobody really taught me any of that stuff. They were just like, do you have a girlfriend? No. Well, maybe you should lose some weight, fat ass. And that's not too far off from the truth. Okay, Michelle, we need to pick this up. Story number two. Okay, I am going to, this is more of an uplifting story. Oh, an uplifting story. I was dating somebody. I mean, yeah, dating somebody for like not the longest time at the moment, but we were very open with each other. So I go and I'm, I'm showing him my WebMD video. And I'm just gonna like, wow, I'm just gonna show this person that I'm schizophrenic. I'm gonna just show the WebMD video. And I'm like, oh God, they're gonna think I'm crazy. What's gonna go on now? They're never gonna see me again. Watch the WebMD video. The reaction is, oh, that was good. Why'd you just show me that? That's really the story. Person didn't care at all. Oh, you're schizophrenic? Okay. That that's it. They just Okay. They yeah, have been fine. dating you for a while? Yeah. Just bait it was maybe like third date. Here's my video. Oh, you're schizophrenic? Oh, okay. It's a cool video. I liked it. This is a great story, and we are absolutely going to leave this in the podcast, but we played True Truths and a Lie before, and you told this exact same story, so I know this one is true. Damn it. (laughs) We are going to absolutely leave it in because we accept that most of our viewers have not listened to all 50-some episodes of the Psych Central Show podcast. However... I'll tell a different story. Michelle's memory is not what it used to be. I will tell a different story. No, you can't tell a different story. I'll that tell is a different your story, story. And I know that it's true. So we are going to call that one the true story that Michelle told already. God damn it. Story number two. So between my second wife and my third wife, to give everybody some perspective... I wanted to to date and being hypersexual, being mentally ill, being kind of, uh, you know, not, not the best person making the wrong choices. Uh, I dated a lot, both before I was married, after I was married and while I was married. So I, I really, I, I really made a lot of bad, bad decisions when it came to how I behaved in past relationships. That's how you end up twice divorced. I I have some responsibility in that. Some of it was untreated mental illness. Some of it was poor decisions that I made and it all kind of wrapped together. And after my second marriage dissolved, I'm I'm a guy, I wanna be married. I'm, I'm happy being married, but I want a good marriage. And I really looked hard at my previous two marriages and I thought, what mistakes am I making? And one of the mistakes that I was making is that I was always dating like these unavailable women, maybe women who were already in relationships, maybe women that weren't making the best choices themselves. I made a lot of relationship decisions based on how quickly people would have sex with me. So I wanted to do it better. So I created a profile on an online dating site and I really put a lot of thought and effort and energy into it. And I said that I was looking for a long-term relationship And I wanted to be with somebody that was also looking for a long-term relationship, somebody age appropriate, somebody that was stable, somebody that like me had like a job, et cetera. And one of the first dates that I went on was with this very nice woman. And I met her at like, I don't know, 11 o'clock that day. And we stayed together all the way until two o'clock that night. That's how long the date was, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., First, we went to a movie, then we went to dinner, then we went for coffee, then we went to a bar, and finally at 2 o'clock, we had to go because, you know, every- 2 p.m. or 2 a.m.? 2 a.m. Yeah, you said 2 p.m. Oh, thank you for correcting me. 2 a.m. I apologize. I was together from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. That's that's a long time. That's like a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. This was a magnificent first date. I hope you hit that at the end of the night. I did not. What? Uh, Yeah, at the end of the night, it was 2 a.m. And I took her to her car. I walked her to her car. Again, I'm a gentleman. Remember the post-it notes. I'm a gentleman. And I said, I I really had a good time with you. I would like to see you again. And she said, that would be wonderful. But I usually can't get together on the weekends because my husband's home. And I laughed. I was like, that's funny. And she goes, no, for real. My, my husband is, is usually gone during the week and home on the weekends. He works in another state. I was like, are, are you serious? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had I, it Oh, was the, look at you, Mr. Mistress. I, it was the first time in my life that I was ever speechless. I was, in, I was incredibly speechless. I, I didn't know what to say. I was angry. I walked away. I was just... For the first time in my life, I wanted to be a grown-up and an adult and have a relationship with a real, available, moral person and get rid of like all of the mistakes that I had made in my past. And even though I had done everything right, I still somehow found 
another immoral, defective, lying person. Now, I am proud of myself because the old Gabe would have been like, sweet, you say during the week? I got nothing to do during the week. But but I didn't. I left. I, I didn't. I just mumbled stuff. I, For real, Michelle, you would have been so impressed with the amount of speechless that I was. So this has to do with bipolar because you were trying to be respectful. Yeah, I was trying to get in a real relationship and somehow I still managed to find... I was just drawn to these people, apparently. Even though I tried to do the right thing, I still ended up in the wrong place. I don't know that that's bipolar disorder, but it's mental health. I was I was trying to fix all the mistakes of my past and, and find a good, available, healthy relationship. And even though I tried to do the right thing, I still ended up standing in front of an unhealthy relationship. And I am proud of myself that I made the right decision as soon as I was aware, but I did have to wonder why am I so defective that even when I try to be in a healthy relationship, I still end up attracting these types of people. Like, what is it about me? Do, do, do I have, uh, you, you know, date me because I'm fucked up written on my forehead? You so do. Even you do. though I'm saying the right things, people are like, well, he's okay. saying he's looking for a long-term relationship. I get you, Gabe. I get you. But clearly he is messed up. Which one? What, what are we naming this one? I think that we should name my story to Married Chick. Married Chick. Married Chick. We'll be right back to Two Truths and a Lie after these messages. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face session. Go to BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central. We are back. Story number three. Three Michelle. My next story. Here we go. We're going to call him Willie. Willie. I like the name Willie. <laughs> I was dating Willie for, I actually took, I brought up Willie before. The guy that I was like dating for like two years and he didn't know that I was schizophrenic. And then I started my company and goes, what? You're not schizophrenic. I was like, yes, I am. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Well, the thing was with Willie once he discovered that I had schizophrenia and we were dating for a while and everything and he was kind of deciding that he wanted to move and all that stuff, he kind of told me that like he did want to be with me, but he wanted to move. And part of the reason he wanted to move was that like his relationship with me here could never really work out because I had schizophrenia and he didn't want to have kids with me because he didn't want our kids to have mental illness in their genes. So him moving wasn't just for him having a new life, but for us breaking up as well, because he could never see a future with us. Wow. Yeah. So he broke up with you because you were schizophrenic and he didn't want to have little schizophrenic children. Well, pretty much. But he was he was moving. But he also was saying that to me that was like, yeah, we're not going to do long distance or anything because we need to move on because it would never work out anyway. We couldn't have a future, really. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So we are going to call story number three breakup because Michelle bad mom. Ready for number three? I'm ready for your number three, Gabe. My number three falls the exact same pattern as yours, which is just coincidental. Mm. I want everybody to know right now that Michelle and I do not sit down and discuss Mm. these ahead of time, or obviously I would have told Michelle that she told me that story before. We are playing this game for real. So when Michelle gets it wrong, it's because she's stupid. And when I get it right, it's because I am super, super smart. My next story is also about somebody that thought that I was bad with children. In between, so I've had... As longtime listeners of the show and people who have read my stuff know, I've had I've had like four significant relationships in my life. I've had you know relationships that lasted you know a, a couple weeks or a month or two, but but there's been four significant relationships in my life. You know, three wives and and a woman that I lived with for a while. The woman that I lived with, I don't really talk about her all that much because in some ways she's one of the more painful ones because she had a child, and we knew each other and were together for several years. And that means I saw her child go from like age one to like age five. And that's a lot of bonding to do. 
with a with a kid. And I I really loved this 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 child. The 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 kid meant a lot to me. And it never occurred to me that if the relationship ended between you know, me and mom, that that would mean the relationship between me and kid would end. Like, I, I don't know why I never connected those dots, but I just, I just never connected those dots. I, I just, I, I really thought that I would just know this kid forever. I really took on the role of stepdad, like really seriously. And uh, I was a co-parent and uh, I loved him a lot. And one day as the relationship was evolving with me and mom and we were talking about like getting married and buying a house and all of that kind of stuff that, that you do, her mother, so the child's grandmother, decided that I would be a bad influence on the child, that I would hurt him because of my bipolar disorder and you can't let mental patients live with your children and that's irresponsible and convinced the woman that I was dating to leave me, break up with me. And she told me, as a mother, it is irresponsible of me to have you around my child. You will eventually hurt him. And I can't risk it. That is some fucked up shit. And uh, I kept explaining that I'm, that's not true. And uh, she said, I have to listen to my mother. My mother has known me my whole life. She's a good grandmother and uh, she has seen things that I can't see because I'm emotionally invested and uh, she is extremely worried that you will hurt my child. And uh, as a mother, that's not a risk I can take as, as much as I want to be with you. We, we have to break up. How did that make you feel, Gabe? Like garbage. To this day, it is one of the most traumatizing thing that's ever happened to me. It, it was worse than being diagnosed with bipolar. Like, because I, I had a kid that I love just ripped away from me. And, you know, I have no rights. I'm, I'm just, you, you, you know, I don't, I don't have any like legal rights. I can't like have visitation. I can't. Yeah. She, she moved away. I haven't seen the kid since that was it. It was mm -hmm. just over just like that. I saw him every day for four years and then nothing. And I was told it was because of an illness that I didn't want, that I didn't deserve, and it, that was in fine control. I, I don't understand any of it. I don't understand any of it. I, I still to this day don't understand. I, I think I was a damn good stepfather. I don't think I'm a bad person. And to have somebody say, hey, look, I can see the future, and because of your illness, you will someday hurt a child, so I have to run from you. It's a lot. Uh, so I'm going to call that... Um, stupid mother. Yes. Yeah, stupid mother. Okay. So to recap everyone in this round of Two Truths and a Lie, Valentine's Day edition. The first round was Alabama Stigma and High School Dating Suicide. And story number two is the true story that Michelle already told in a different episode versus Gabe Dating a Married Chick. And story number three, break up because Michelle will someday be a bad mother versus stupid mother who dumped Gabe. All right, Michelle, do you have any questions? Because I am ready to tell you which one is the lie right now. Okay, just tell me. All right, are you ready? Yeah. I, I know your lie. Okay, which is my lie? Nobody broke up with you because you'd be a bad mom. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Do you want to go? Do you want to? Do, do, do you I want to guess? You, you, get, you get questions. You're allowed to ask questions. Okay. The married woman you went on the date with, did they have any kids? I don't believe so. No. What kind of car did she drive? I, I honestly don't remember. It was a nice car. It was a two door. It was like sporty, but it was black. That's all I really remember. And it was also 2 a.m. and it was dark. I don't remember the brand. Is the, is, is the, is the middle one the lie? Is the dating the married chick yeah. the lie? No. 100% true story. Dance. Completely happened. And it happened exactly that way. I really was speechless. To this day, people marvel that I didn't have a comeback. Well, I don't see how the first one can be a lie. Why not? Because it doesn't, I feel like everybody in high school thinks that no one wants to date them unless they're like a super popular person. Like, I feel like I felt that same way in high school too. That just seems too reasonable. Is that a lie? Is that, a, how could that be a lie? I told you in the story that I married my high school sweetheart. 
So how could I also have a story about how nobody would date me in high school? I was also prom king while I did leave that out. I was prom king. I actually did all right in high school. Well, see, I wouldn't guess that because you said you were 550 pounds, zit-faced, ugly, yep, all that stuff. Yep, but not in high school. But not in high school? Not in high school. I got fat after high school. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so the history that I know about you is not the high school history. Correct. Yes. I see. Okay. Then I see. Because I would imagine all of that could potentially really happen in high school. I didn't realize that the big, fat, pimply-faced Gabe was after high school. Big, fat, pimply-faced Gabe was after high school. I did have problems in high school feeling alone and lonely. I mean, I did have symptoms of bipolar disorder. But the the the, the I, I had friends. I, I really did have friends. Um, I, I, I dated. Not a lot. I'm not saying that I was super popular then in the you, dating. You were but, more popular than me in high hey, school then. I, the advantage of going to a high school with only 36 people is we really were close knit. I'm not saying that we all dated each other or anything like that, but I had friends. We made sure that people weren't left alone. I, it, it wasn't invisible. Now, if I would have talked about like my freshman year, that was much more difficult. I was still in, in Ohio where I went to a school that had 600 people in their graduating class. But when I moved to Pennsylvania in with my grandparents, Life changed for me a lot. I went to this little private school. I had a lot of people watching over me. I had a lot of friends. I, I dated a, a reasonable amount. I met the woman that I married in high school, my high school sweetheart. I really was prom king. That is a true story. And, and I did all right. I saved it. I By the time I graduated, I actually felt pretty good until, you know, I bought back down again. But this does make the true story that somebody ripped their kid away from me because of an illness. Well, that went, that mother's a bitch. I mean, and I'm just saying you had a much better high school life than I had. I am. And very... I wasn't a big, fat, pimply faced, whatever. Yeah. But I mean, your personality was still bad. My personality was amazing. Was it this personality? I was, I was just paranoid all the time and thought everybody hated me. So yeah. Yeah. Cause everybody wants to be friends with somebody that thinks that everybody hates them. Come on, man. Own your, own your flaws. I own my flaws. I was very paranoid. I didn't have a lot of friends because I thought everyone hated me. So I was very quiet and kept to myself and only talked to a few people. And when I did talk to other people, when I was done talking to them, I thought, why were they talking to me? Oh my God, are they talking about me behind my back right now? Because they don't, they, they're probably wondering, why did they just talk to me? Why was I talking to them? You know, I was what you described, basically. That was my high school. I see what you're saying. I, yeah, I, that's I, why I thought that that had to be true. Because okay. that's very high school-esque for somebody with a mental illness. I, I see what you're saying. You are right. And in fairness, you, you know, it's it's a little bit of a cheat. I, I, will give you a, I will give you a partial credit. I know your generation likes that a lot. Yes. I will give you partial credit because, you know, my... my my ninth, 10th, and first 11th grade year in a bigger school was much, much more difficult. Remember, I dropped out of high school in right. the 11th grade, and then I went back to a private school in Pennsylvania when I moved to my grandparents and repeated my 11th grade year. But then my 11th and 12th grade year were, 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 were actually very good. And so I sort of have two high school experiences. I have the big city high school experience that was really, really bad. And then I have the small town high school experience that was really, really good. So, you know, I, I will I will give you partial credit. I won and you lost, but with an asterisk. But I accidentally told the same story again. That is true. You did. Well, it's not my fault. You know, my medicine gives me nah, my memory. No. My medicine no, gives I'm, I'm going to no, use the medicine excuse. No, I'm using the medicine no, excuse. This is my medicine. No. It's my medicine. No. Yeah, it is. No. It gives me bad memory. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Thank you for listening to this edition of A Bipolar, a Schizophrenic, and a Podcast. We love trotting out two truths and a lie whenever we can. So thank you for the folks who emailed in that suggestion. Please head over to store.psychcentral.com and buy our swag. It helps keep the lights on. And the Define Normal shirts are just frankly not going to sell themselves. There might even be a discount for Valentine's Day, except there's not. Thank you, everybody. Please like us everywhere. Send us to your friends. And we will see you next week. Valentine's Day. You've been listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. If you love this episode, don't keep it to yourself. Head over to iTunes or your preferred podcast app to subscribe, rate, and review. To work with Gabe, go to GabeHoward.com. To work with Michelle, go to Schizophrenic.nyc. For free mental health resources and online support groups, head over to psychcentral.com. The show's official website is psychcentral.com slash BSP. You can email us at show at psychcentral.com. Thank you for listening and share widely.